and I'm emotional. I'm really emotional and I don't know why. Hey guys, so it's time for another book diary and this one is for Tower of Dawn by Sarah J Maas. So I'm 120 pages into this. As you know if you've been watching my channel, I don't particularly want to read it. Kingdom of Ash is already out now but I've been slacking and I am behind. But I'm 120 pages in and I am enjoying it. I don't have too many thoughts yet because I'm still in like the setup phase. I asked my friend Dora from Confessing My Reads when it starts to like pick up and she said like the story gets started around page 170 so I'm glad that I'm kind of close to that. But I am interested because I haven't read it before. This is the only book, well this is the only book diary that I have done for a Sarah J Mass book, like a Throne of Glass book that I haven't read before. So we're going to see how this goes because I might be a bit shook up a bit more shooker than I have been rereading things I already knew. The only thing I really have to say that's like a thought is that I was kind of surprised when in chapter one we walk into a room and there's six new characters there that we haven't met before and I'm trying to get to grips with those as well as the fact that they're currently in mourning and essentially what I'm trying to say is it's a different country and they have different customs, customs? They have different customs and for the first few chapters it was hard for me to sort of organise all that in my head when I'm going in sort of expecting it to be an established thing that I already know. But obviously it's a different setting so it's not. So that took me a little while. I've met Irene. I knew that she was going to be in this because in her short story in Assassin's Blade she goes to the Tor says me and this is set on the southern continent and she's the only character who hasn't made a reappearance in the core series. So I knew that she was coming. Didn't know she'd be so uppity. But then her story is the shortest one, so we don't really know her all that well in Assassin's Blade. So, disclaimer, as usual, this is going to be spoilery. If you haven't read this book and you don't want to be spoiled, then please don't continue. Put it in a playlist and come back when you have read Terror of Dawn. But, yeah, I'm going to go do some reading and I'll let you know when something juicy happens. So, what I'm finding strange about this book and something that I completely did not expect going into it is the shift in ships. It seems like Kaol is going to be with Irene and Nezrin, maybe Sartak, the prince. I don't know. Like, I didn't expect that to happen and I feel like I should because Sarah J Maas is notorious for switching up the relationships all the time. But I felt like because Kaol had already had the failed relationship with Selena that the one with Nezrin would be like just the one because it had barely even begun so I thought we'd see the progression of their relationship throughout this but it seems like him and Irene are going to have a thing going on and Nezrin is hardly even in it so she's been spending a lot of time with Sartak and some time with her family but even though the perspective shifts because it's third person so it shifts between Irene, Kaol and... Nezrin pretty much. Not a lot of Nezrin at all so I, I don't know what's going to be going on with her in this book. So first up I don't want you to be alarmed by this. This is my, it's not even on straight, this is my reading poncho and I like to wear it when I'm reading because I can't have blankets around my shoulders because I need my hand to hold my book. I can wrap it around me and just have one hand free. So um there's that. Anyway <laughs> I feel like Irene Irene, not Irene. I feel like Nezrin and Kaol are just kind of gonna silently drift apart. I've just got to the part where she said that she might leave with Sartak to uncover some information about the Valg and they're both kind of like av avoiding the fact that there's nothing really there anymore which I'm only on page 264 and at the beginning of the book it was that she wanted to continue the relationship as it was but he had such deep insecurities about being in a wheelchair and not being the man he once was. I quote it like that because a disability doesn't make you any less a man but I don't want the quotations to like diminish the feeling because I understand why people in that situation would feel like that even though it's not true. Disability doesn't make you any less a human or a man. So their relationship seemed to be quite good. She was really interested and then she tried it on with him a little bit and he didn't want anything to do with it because of the insecurity I've just mentioned. Since then she's just been avoiding him. He's not been avoiding her but she's not been around 
and now she's like seems over it so it's, it's a weird way to end the relationship I'm guessing that somewhere later in the book they're going to have an actual discussion where they talk about it but I can't say for sure because I don't know yet. So I just read chapter 27 and that is where Irene is returning to Kale's rooms after they've sort of had a disagreement because he was upset that Nezrin had left but he hadn't told her and she's on her way back and she's being stalked and so she runs in and she barricades herself into his bedroom with him and there's a valg assumedly it hasn't been seen but there's a valg at the door like showing her name and this is the first chapter where it's been like super compelling and I'm so into it but sadly I only have one more chapter and then I'm up to part two and then I'm gonna go to sleep I've read about a hundred and I will have read about 135 pages today um so I've read a huge chunk I just want to continue but I also also kind of want to get some sleep. Has anybody else noticed that the horse warriors of the southern continent are like essentially Dothraki warriors? Because I got to the bit where they're talking about how they train the riders and Sartak said that by six they can stand on a horse and I was like oh my god the Dothraki. The princes and princesses of the southern continent really seem to have it in for Kaol and really just do not want to join him. Hussar and Argon specifically and you know I'm kind of surprised I thought he would have won them over by now I'm on page 504 but they're just not playing the game so Kaol's just told them about Rowan and they're just like really bitter and nasty so I'm not sure like I've just got to the bit where they've discovered that maybe the Fae settled in the southern continent and bred their blood into the human lines and maybe that's why there's so many healers in Antica. I'm wondering, I think Sartak will definitely leave with them, so that's all the Rokin and Cashin, I think will end up going with them. The healers, maybe? I'm not sure what armies Kale's gonna raise, I don't think the Carganate are gonna go. I think that it might actually just be Sartak and Cashin and the healers that go. Those are my predictions. This book is apparently essential in the Throne of Glass series and so far I am really enjoying it but it's just not the high stakes stuff that Kingdom of Ashes and not Kingdom of Ash, I haven't read that yet obviously, Empire of Storms and so I don't know how it's like essential yet aside from finding out that the silk spiders, silk spiders, what are they called? The spiders of Alg and the healer stuff so it's not like crazy epic but it is good and I am enjoying it. Irene just pushed Hussar into the pool and to be honest I'm living for that because Hussar is a nasty little bitch. Kale's talking about Aelin and their relationship and how he loved her and that it was hard to let her go but it was the right thing to do and my heart is just a bit because of all of my favourite ships in this series Ro Aelin is not one of them my ship with Aelin, my favourite one, is Kaolena. They just, they got me in the heart and I just, I hated it when it ended because when Air of Fire happened, I was, I went into that book just wanting her to go back to Kaol and I was like, okay, but when does she go back to Kaol? And obviously that entire book is all about her and Rowan and her training and her extensive character development and her becoming Aelin and leaving Selena behind and part of leaving Selena behind is leaving Kale behind and it wasn't right but it's what my heart wanted. Okay guys so um sorry for this crappy quality and my location is a bit strange I'm in the toilet at work but I somebody ordered like this order that would going to take me a while to print so I was like while I'm doing that I'll just read a few chapters of Tower of Dawn and I just found out that Maeve is the queen of the Valg. And I am shook. I am so shook that I just had to come in and record this clip because I just couldn't, I couldn't just like hold it in. Maeve is the queen of the Valg. I am shook. So it seems that Farkin's older brother is Lysandra's dad, which is interesting. And I feel like Nedrin's gonna go back and tell her or like figure it out at some point, but 
How does how does one figure that out? Like I imagine that there were plenty of children who were abandoned in Rifthold. Like yeah, it's Lysandra and I know it is, but I don't feel like realistically anyone would ever make that distinction. So the bit that I read last night, we found out that Duva is the one who is the Valg, which I'm kind of surprised and not surprised about. Because from when we found out that the Valg were stalking people, terrorising people, probably responsible for the death of the youngest of the Kargan's children, I did think that while he had so many children and there were no traces of Valg to be found, I thought that maybe it was one of his children, but I also thought it was Kashin, 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 because he's like kind of a good guy, like we're meant to like him. He's not around a whole bunch, but I thought it could be him for the shock value of actually liking him. But now, I didn't really ever think much of Dover and now I understand that that's why it is Dover. But I'm kind of sad about that. I would have preferred it to be a little bit more dramatic, but I'm gonna carry on reading, see what her whole deal is, how she has become Valg. Has she been impregnated with Valg weirdness? We're gonna see. I thought it may come to this where Irene has to heal Dover and by healing Dover, she proves that they can be healed and also it's like a favour to the Kargan who then in turn will send his armies. So I guess my theory earlier that they all weren't going to go is probably gonna be wrong. Interesting that the resurrection thing happened. It happens in another well-known Sarah J Mass book. It's not my favourite. Didn't mind it so much in the other book, but for it to be used again, a little bit off with that. Feel like they could have been done another way. Now they're tied together and Kaol has lost some of the use of his legs again. Which is going to be a bit of a pain in battle. But I guess now I'm going to see if Irene manages to heal Duva, which I'm sure she will. And I'm going to wrap up the last 30 pages of this book. So I'm tearing up at Tower of Dawn and nothing is really happening. So this does not bode well for Kingdom of Ash. Because that's going to make me a mess if I can't even handle a bit of nothing really too emotional in this. So Hussar has just pledged the Armada along with Sartax Rook Riders. And they're all going to head to the Northern Continent. And they're all going to go for Aelin, who isn't Aelin, she's Lysandra and the Rukin are gonna fly with the 13 and I'm emotional. I'm really emotional and I don't know why. It's not even a thing. Like, I'd, it's just, I have problems. Sartak's father just appointed him heir because he had the balls to be like, fuck being the Kargan. I'm gonna follow the woman I love into war. And Sartak is a badass and I love him and he's awesome. This book is just wrapping up like so amazingly. I mean, it's a nice break from the high tension of Empire of Storms. Like, there's still tension, but it's not, like, high risk, like, flat out, my heart is going to stop kind of thing. But it's nice. It's Sarah J Maas, and I am enjoying it. So I finished Tower of Dawn. I'm feeling a bit emotional. Five stars, obviously. I loved it. I adored it. I knew I would. It was everything I needed it to be. I don't want to read Kingdom of Ash. I don't want to watch everyone die. My theories for Kingdom of Ash, everyone's going to die. And I'm not ready for it. Also can't believe that Kale and Irene got married. That was, that was strange. I'm sad that I didn't see it. I'm also really bitter that we never got to see Irene's reaction, that it was Aelin who saved her. That I really wanted to see, so I'm bitter about that. <laughs> Yeah, five stars. Five stars. I'm I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna hope that this doesn't put me in a slump because I need to get to Kingdom of Ash sometime soon. And I hope you've enjoyed this book diary. Please let me know what you thought of this book. It was a nice break before the chaos of Kingdom of Ash, which I'm just not ready for. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to. And I'll see you in my... I'll see you quite regularly on my channel but my next book diary may be for Kingdom of Ash, so look out for that. And yeah, I'll see you later. Bye! Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate You say you're a go when nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no